I woke up to what seemed like a fairly normal morning. I got out of bed, stretched my legs, arms, loosened up my neck and shoulders, and flexed my fingers. But afterwards, when my body felt slack and I no longer heard any post-wake snaps or crunches or whistles, I remember the strangeness of my stretches, the weirdness of my flexing. I, for the last two decades of my life, had been human. As human as one could be, I suppose. But that morning, I found myself with an excess of limbs. In possession of a third, vestigial unaccounted for arm, protruding from my left shoulder. A third leg jutted out from my right hip, small, though plainly a natural growth of my body, and not something grafted onto it in the dead of night. These two growths behaved in accordance with the sensory impulses sent to my other limbs. I had apparently developed the necessary cognitive ability to command these additional appendages in concert with my own. Aside from the expected worry, unease, and mounting disgust that I felt, there also was a sense of something half-remembered. The origin of the nocturnal arrival of these rudimentary limbs, or if not that, their purpose. My mind immediately went to cancer while I slept. Some previously dormant sickness awoke and jump-started the rapid development of the supernumerary branches. But aside from these abhorrent growths, I felt perfectly fine. I didn't feel debilitated by anything. I live with two roommates, guys with whom I attend college, and occasionally have a few or several beers while watching some commonly enjoyed shows but I wouldn't exactly call them friends. We had classes together. We trusted each other not to trash each other's stuff. But the foundation of our relationship was based on the necessity of living. That is, co-renting an apartment. So we never bonded naturally, and money was always at the forefront of our thoughts when interacting with one another. I tell you this because their actions would otherwise seem rather extreme, without knowing the true nature of our association, their actions being the assault and attempt on my life. See, I had observed the extraneous limbs while sitting on my bed. I hadn't yet ventured to the bathroom, or even looked at the mirror fixed to the interior of my closet. So, when I walked into the hall in search of my not-friends, who I hoped could help me in determining what the heck was going on. I had no idea of how I looked. Derek, the genial nature guy, who shared it deer jerky with us during hunting season, was the first to see me. Any mirth had been in his mind immediately dissipated, and his face took on a visage of something bordering on outright terror. Next to him was Carter, who was perpetually moody, and not the most intelligent person. Whether or not the former feeling is due to his awareness of the latter is something that I've never been able to figure out. Anyway, Carter saw me second and unsurprisingly, his stony face just looked even more grim than usual. But when I spoke, something that I hadn't yet done that morning, his face too shifted to one of extreme fright and Derek's practically melted into one of inconsolable panic. I heard my voice, then, and if there's one thing about that day that I'll never forget, it's how freakishly inhuman it sounded. Imagine a bird, a large bird, sporting some pretty powerful vocal cords, wrapped in wiring, and being electrocuted with enough voltage to bring it to agonizing pain, but not enough to kill it. Specific, I know, but it's the closest approximation to the infernal shrieking sound that I made that I can think of. Derek, the nature man, the hunter, immediately went for his gun case, which to my misfortune was kept right in the living room. Carter stood there petrified, his brain not yet comprehending the reality of the multi-armed abomination squawking hellishly before him. In my newfound horror at how my voice sounded, I continued making that sound, screaming in terror at my own screams, exacerbating the already troublesome situation. 
I was thankfully, though painfully, cut short by a volley of buckshot which shredded my right shoulder and pelted my ribs, knocking me back into the wall of the hallway, fracturing the plaster. I roared out my agony, and although it was a horrific, monstrous wail, I couldn't help myself. The pain was unreal, as if I had been doused in gas instead of blazed by a literal hellfire. Somehow I managed to stumble into the bathroom without being splattered all over the walls by a second volley. I shut the door, as if believing it could withstand a shotgun blast, and stared at the hideous reflection in the mirror. Eyes. So many eyes looked back at me. Some blinking, others bubbling into existence on my face, as if I was in the process of some rapid metamorphosis. In that cursory glance, I spotted at least two dozen of various shapes and stages of development. My still human brain tried to orient itself among the eyes, tried to see with which two I gazed, but something told me that I utilized the visual receptors of far more than two to demonically leer back at myself. My mouth hung agape, again emitting that ear shriveling scream and my hair had fallen out completely, either in the hall or at some point during the night. My unwanted limbs twitched disconcertingly, and blood streamed from my shoulder and abdomen. Outside, I heard the panicked, manic voices of my roommates. Derek's voice was the loudest, and it said, Dude, what the heck is that? Was that... No, it couldn't have been Eli. And Carter responded, who else could it have been? It was wearing his freaking clothing, man. And you shot him, what the heck? At least Carter was somewhat sticking up for me, despite my abysmal shrieking and repulsive appearance. But I don't care who it was. That thing isn't human anymore. Can't you hear it? Does that sound like a human to you? Who even is this guy? What do we even really know about him? Carter didn't immediately reply. And while I thought his silence to be contemplative, my hopes were abolished when I heard Derek say, Exactly. He's just some guy, and now he's something. Carter didn't reply at that one either, and some newly formed, extra-sensory perception in my brain had told me to move, and my body lurched sideways, falling clumsily into the tub. Just as I landed, the bathroom door exploded, sending hundreds of shards throughout the room. Shrapnel riddled my flesh, but most were superficial wounds. The discharge of the shotgun had missed me entirely. My survival-induced panic gave way to a sort of primal rage at being cornered, made someone's prey, and just as fast as I had dived into the tub, I reared up and I charged at Derek, swatting the weapon away and battering him with all my arms. Even with added limbs, I was still a fairly small person, and Derek could have easily repelled and stricken me down if he had a clear enough head to do so. But my eyes, the ever-growing number of them, freaked him out, and he froze up, accepting the blows that rained down on him. Carter, who had imposed a threat and therefore hadn't factored into my retaliation, gained some resembling courage and charged into me, knocking me away from Derek. My monstrous brain adjusted its parameters for threat detection and designated Carter as a hostile entity, and against the will of my upper mind, I charged at him too, assailing him just as I had Derek. During this entire time, my body had been steadily changing, undergoing some transformation, and by the time that I had seized Carter by the throat, several other appendages had grown. Some formed in the jointed nature of arms and legs, while others manifested strangely under some morphological blueprint wholly alien to anything I had ever known. Some appendages had inserted themselves into the very walls of the hallway in which I battled my roommates, while others writhed and slapped autonomously. I sensed visually Derek getting up behind me, despite the fact that I was facing Carter and I realized that I had grown eyes all over my head, not just on my face. I also realized that my mouth had essentially fell open, 
with my jaw slack and it morphed into a proboscis-like attachment, while what remained of my upper lip split open to reveal newly grown yellow and jagged teeth. I was an abomination. Some hell-dreamt nightmare materializing piece by piece into the waking world, upsurping the body that had taken its humanity for granted. Carter had lost consciousness or died. I couldn't tell despite having the enhanced visual acuity of some super bird. Derek had gone for the shotgun, but one of my tendril-like appendages had slammed down on it and crushed it into pieces. Please, please don't, don't do it. He said a lot more after that, babbled out incomprehensible arrangements of syllables, which I knew to be human words, but could no longer understand. Even my own thoughts, which I've always assumed to be more abstract imitations than words, took on an alien aspect, and I began to think in some inexpressible, unrepeatable alien syntax. A purpose then made itself known to me, having arrived along with the reworking of my linguistic understandings, and at that moment a set of wings erupted from my back, and they too were covered in eyes. Although my body operated under its own control, and I was more a passenger than its controller. I did at least command the eyes to avoid staring into the open bathroom. I didn't want to catch a glimpse of my transformation in the mirror. I was aware of enough, and I'm sure that the sight of my new and hideous body would have ejected the remnants of my human mind, allowing for the total conversion into some bestial horror. Derek, having pledged his fealty and fear, was allowed to scuttle away into his room. He slammed the door shut and locked it, but in my twisted, super predator mind, I immediately knew the obstacle was something I could have easily bypassed. I even sensed the other mind filing away the information, should it become hungry and desire an indulgence of living protein. My goal, which I had unwillingly accepted but of which I was still unaware, compelled the body to leave the apartment. The four powerful, pillar-like appendages shot up from my abdomen, sending the front door careening into the night. I bent and exited the building, and received a staggering amount of sensory information. Car horns blared violently, the air conditioners hummed like gathered masses of annoying insects, streetlights flared brightly, intolerably, smells unnatural, chemical, and mechanical, tortured my many olfactory organs. The cold wind swept across my skin like some evil and boreal exhalation, and shapes, incomprehensible, threw off my depth perception. Their forms irreconcilable with what my monster brain was accustomed to. It was too much, a sensory overload to trump all others, and I fell down in a heap on the front porch. Plainly, the creature into which I had been transforming was something of an older, pre-human race, and I couldn't handle the sights, smells, and forged shapes of the human civilized world. As my hundreds of eyes closed, and my two conflicting brains simultaneously spazzed out, I heard voices approaching. Familiar voices raised an alarm. I awoke on the couch, with Carter and Derek sitting on each side of me. The TV was on, some episode of a sitcom that we all liked. Derek noticed that I had awakened and he snapped his fingers, alerting Carter. Carter then punched me in the arm hard, and I feared that in retaliation my monster brain would make me rip his head off. But nothing happened. And my right arm instinctively reached to my left, to rub the spot of impact. No other arms moved or writhed or convulsed or slithered. My legs had been covered by a blanket, and upon removing it, I saw only the two with which I had been born. Dude, are you alright? Relieved, I said that I was, and judging by their faces, which obviously showed that a story was in order, I asked what had happened. They said that I had stumbled out of my room earlier this morning, drunk or higher in some way altered, and fell into Derek. Derek pushed me off and I fell into the wall cracking it. I was to pay for it. I then started screaming as if I had been struck and fled into the bathroom. They heard me shouting, too many eyes, and smashing the mirror. So Derek kicked open the door. 
I lunged at him, knocking him over, and then I came at Carter, who had just stepped aside. I ran to the front door, looked around outside, and started swooning, and then fell to the ground, completely unconscious. Yeah, you were pretty messed up, was Carter's closing statement to the story. Apparently, I had imagined the whole thing in some drug or booze-induced daymare, but I don't do drugs and I didn't go to sleep drunk. Neither of them believed me when I told them this, and aside from reiterating that I'm paying for the wall, neither seemed to be upset about my actions. They had both on several occasions behaved almost as ridiculously. We were college students after all. I got up and I went back to my room, where I started checking my social media on my PC. Derek walked by, holding a broom and dustpan, presumably to clean out the pieces of the doorframe that had come off when he had kicked it open. I shouted at him, Hey man, let me clean that up, it's my fault. He stopped and looked at me funny and I repeated myself. His confusion deepened and he said, Dude? And then the terrifying realization came to me. My desk is against the window side wall of my bedroom, opposite the wall of my room's door. So, I wasn't facing Derek at all and I had no way of seeing him walk by, carrying the cleaning supplies. The only way for that to have been possible is if I had eyes in the back of my head. Not wanting to cause a panic and wanting to rationalize the preacher national sight and its horrific suggestion for my own sanity, I said that I saw him in the reflection of my own screen. A total lie, of course. He said, alright, though definitely in a tone that suggested a disbelief, and set this stuff down by my door. When he went into his room, I fearfully prodded around the back of my head and found nothing protruding from my mess of curly hair. Relieved, I gathered up the cleaning items and went into the bathroom. As I swept up the splinters, I glanced towards the mirror. Reflected back was my normal image, bringing me further relief. But dimly, as if existing within the mirror, or almost imperceptibly superimposed over my human reflection, was the image of that abominable creature. I blinked, rubbed my eyes, and moved around to different positions. But the terrible image never changed, or left its shadow-like position over my body. I feel normal, but I've stopped looking at my reflection. And sometimes, I can still see things that I have no business seeing with my two lowly human, front-facing eyes.